I would like to begin by addressing the heinous attack yesterday. And to those who broke the law, you will pay. You do not represent our movement. You do not represent our country. And if you broke the law, you can't say that. I'm not gonna, you, I already said you will pay. The demonstrators who infiltrated the Capitol have defied the seat of dust. It's defiled, right? See, I can't see it very well. Okay, I'll, I'll do this. I'm going to do this. Let's go. But this election is now over. Congress has certified the results. I don't want to say the election's over. I just want to say Congress has certified the results without saying the election's over. Okay. <laughs> That's just a clip they played at the January 6th hearings on Thursday night. In prime time, uh, while Donald Trump, a bit of his speech, there was multiple speeches that he tried to get through that day, but he couldn't get through certain parts. Specifically, as you saw there, I, I, I mean, I'm not gonna say they're gonna be punished. I mean, I've already said that they're gonna that they're gonna be dealt with. I can't believe this. No, I'm not gonna say it. I can't say it. I'm not gonna say it. He was having trouble getting through his speeches because he didn't want to distance himself from his mob that wasn't his mob, but was Antifa, but was kind of his mob, but was filled with agitators. But then it was, then it wasn't, then it was a visit, then it was violent. Who knows? As long as they just toss around nonsense to make sure they'll same followers continue to follow him. Now he had, uh, of course, this inability to get through these things because he wanted them there. And we're gonna get into more of those things that he did. But there was another hang up. <laughs> there was a big hang up Rick that he had. Let's go to this next video uh, to show how he defeated that hang up. I would like to begin by addressing the heinous attack yesterday. Yesterday is a hard word for me. Just take that. The attack. Ah, uh, good. Take the word yesterday, because it doesn't work with the heinous attack on our country. Say on our country. Want to say that? No, 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 no. My only goal was to ensure the integrity of the vote. My only goal was to ensure the integrity of the vote. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Damn it, vote, the vote, the vote, the e-vote, the Ohio State University, who knows Rick. But we're gonna get to the serious parts about this, specifically some of the closest officials and aides and their true thoughts about what he is and what he was about on that day. But let's go through this stuff yesterday and damn it, I don't wanna say that about my followers. On January 9th, two of President Trump's top campaign officials texted each other about the president's glaring silence on the tragic death of Capitol Police Officer Brian Sicknick, who succumbed to his injuries the night of January 7th. These campaign officials were- Hold on, you guys, hold on. We're gonna get back to that. That's the serious part. I wanna get to yesterday and Rick is here. So Rick, please, please. Um, okay, <clears throat> you could add yesterday to the list of like, Orange mm -hmm. and like Tanzania and other things that this person can't be say. careful, bro. But yeah, <laughs> I am. Um, look, this is a reality show person trying to give a very serious speech, and he can't get through it because he knows how lucrative this last chess piece is that he must play. It is about election fraud and election lies, which are completely unfounded and not true. And every single court case stands one that they went to with Trump appointed judges, they lost. The reason he doesn't want that stuff in a speech is because if he says he lost, what else does he have to grift off of? What else does he have to hang his hat on? This is the whole thing. Like this is it, right? Like aside from like you know the the, the racism, the bigotry, the xenophobia, mm -hmm. like like the empowering of white supremacy. Like the, put that to the side for a second. The main crux is they stole it. You see it in the good liars on TikTok and every single clip when they interview somebody outside a Trump rally. It is their calling card, it is what they have. So there is a reason why strategically, and he even knows that it's wrong and false. But strategically why he wanted those things taken out of his speech. 
It's so he could continue to ride this wave as long as possible. That and number two, to make sure that those folks still feel comfortable doing the things they're doing. Specifically on that day, he's like, well, this isn't done. The fight isn't over. The uh, the insurrection and the attempt to take over the United States of America is not complete. If I say things like this, then it means that I'm not on board with what I told mm -hmm. my people to do. And this is what they methodically broke down and they've been doing in all these hearings in different ways. Now, this one of the themes of this one from, from just on Thursday was um, how he, knowingly made sure <laughs> that his followers didn't get the idea that he didn't want them there. Or that as they went through it, he's like, well, I'm just gonna let this happen more and more and more. While people who knew what was going on also on his side were very upset about it. Which leads us to this next clip because Virginia Congresswoman Elaine Loria led the committee through or the hearing at least yesterday through this entire process with these two officials that work closely with Trump. Let her explain that first. On January 9th, Two of President Trump's top campaign officials texted each other about the president's glaring silence on the tragic death of Capitol Police Officer Brian Sicknick, who succumbed to his injuries the night of January 7th. These campaign officials were Tim Murtaugh, Trump's director of communications, and one of his deputies, Matthew Walking. Their job was to convince people to vote for President Trump. So they knew his heart, his mind, and his voice as well as anyone. And they knew how he connects with his supporters. They knew his heart, his mind, and the way he connects with his supporters. There's a specific reason why she said that because as they were discussing Trump's lack of response for the death of Officer Sicknick, this is what they said. Let's watch. Here's what they had to say about their boss. Murtaugh said, also not to have acknowledged the death of the Capitol Police officer. Walking responded, that's enraging to me. Everything he said about supporting law enforcement was a lie. To which Murtaugh replied, you know what this is? Of course, if he acknowledged the dead cop, he'd be implicitly faulting the mob. And he won't do that because they're his people. And he would also be close to acknowledging that what he lit at the rally got out of control. No way he acknowledges something that could ultimately be called his fault. No way. President Trump did not then and does not now have the character or courage to say to the American people what his own people know to be true. He is responsible for the attack on the Capitol on January 6th. Representative Lawyer is absolutely correct. They said it. We're not saying it. They said it, Rick. Very quickly. <clears throat> I remember doing research for a story because as people know on TYT Sports, it's the intersection of sports and politics. And I remember doing a story about how Trump Atlantic City hosted an Evander Holyfield fight and how he screwed himself out of boxing by screwing the world of boxing. But long and short is, also in Atlantic City, there was a former executive named Jack O'Donnell. A lot of people remember him when Trump was on the campaign trail because he said that Trump is a literal racist. And one of the things that I recall is in the 80s, Trump Atlantic City was failing. And in 89, three executives went down in a helicopter crash. Instead of saying this is a tragic loss, I'm, I'm, I'm so sad for the families. What he then did was crap on the executives for his businesses failing. That's who he's been, that's what he does. And also in 89, when that chopper went down, two other real quick notes. The first is he injected himself into the story with a lie. As he always does, saying that he was going to be on that chopper when he never was going to. So he tried to push a story of like, oh, a near death experience. And the second is, according to journalist Sarah Kenzier, these three executives were under investigation about Trump properties. The moral of the story is there are no morals within this man's realm, and this is simply what he does. Always has been, and people have always known this, but he's somehow made a successful route. All the way up to the presidency and now still controlling a significant percentage of the country to think that he is an up and up upstanding individual. It's a damn shame.